start to put tension on my string and draw back, I was like, okay, I'm asking. It's him. You can look at the horns when he's dead. I'm, I'm in, you know, in the zone. Let the arrow go. It's perfect. Uh, when they lose their front shoulders, yeah, you start, yeah, that's how you know. Went about five, ten more yards. You probably went 20 yards in a little step down, which I get back up. I saw him fall up. We rushed for a few rods that night. We got like 156 in front of like that, and then the next day we came up to 153 even. You're listening to the White Cat Outdoors podcast, bringing you to the table where we talk about the outdoors. What's going on, everybody? This is episode 79 of the White Cat Outdoors podcast. I'm your host tonight, Tom. Thanks for stealing that, buddy. <laughs> you bet. Actually, was, he came in hot. It was he nice. did, because he was probably watching me. I was just about to, and he just snatched it right up. And it was solid, though. <laughs> on tonight's show, we have both my brothers, Nick and Luke. Hey. How's it going? And Cousin Frank. Yep. What's up? And tonight, we are going to be diving into some walleye fishing with Luke. We have the expert in studio tonight. Wouldn't wouldn't say I'm an expert. I would. So, yeah, like I said, walleye fishing, Luke's going to go through the do's and the don'ts, the how-tos, maybe share a few stories. It's going to be a good time. I'm excited. We're right in the heat of walleye season. Uh, towards the beginning yeah, for, say, for us in beginning. Erie here. It's more... By More the, the time this, well, we're podcasting on a Friday, oh. so it's We should out. probably, real quick, give a happy belated birthday to Todd. Um, just this week, celebrated Big 5-1. Yeah, that's so, why we didn't podcast on Wednesday. Yeah, that was exactly why we're here on a Friday. Um, He's over the hill now. Yeah, so if you guys hill. follow us on the gram and stuff, you've seen you know, a little happy birthday from him and a uh, picture of his buck over the last couple of years before he sent some carbon through it. Um, but yeah. Happy birthday. Yeah, happy birthday, Dad. You going to drink to that, Tom? Mm-hmm. Tom's going to drink to that. So I guess they were right. Uh, walleye fishing season's just getting started. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. It seems like as... You're wrong. <laughs> just shut up. Yep. Typically, Incorrect. the big school goes over more towards Ohio. Do you know the... why that is, Tom? No. See, that's kind of that's why we brought you on, the expert. No. Like, ice fishing. Like, ice on. They're over in Ohio, then ice off. They start working their way back towards Erie, and they're just now starting to really pick up. Why is it, Luke? Yeah, tell us. So, the geography of the lake, Nick, I'd I'd love to tell you. No, but generally speaking, the water over in Ohio is shallower. There's a lot um, bigger rivers in Ohio, um, and the walleye go over there when ice starts getting on and seek the shallow water and to spawn and as springtime rolls around and the water starts to warm back up they start shooting uh the east over to us and into new york and then start going north and getting out into the middle of the lake so right about now is that that school it's different every year depending on weather and how winter was and what have you but there's a insane hatch i think it was I'm not even going to put a number out because millions. it was millions, yes, on the estimated hatch that they had this year as before and two years prior. I would say a few, the past few yeah. years, people have just been hammering like 15-inch walleye. So, it seems like every year they're like record hatch. Oh, wait, no, new record hatch. <laughs> yeah. New record how, hatch. Do you know how they estimate that hatch? Couldn't tell you. Okay. Science. Well, I'm sure it's science. <laughs> it's just probably more math than science. Yeah, I'm— so I'm a I'm what they call a hobby fisherman. So I don't don't get into go, this. I don't not go, for long. I don't though. go out. Yeah, hopefully, uh, I don't go out to compete um, right now. So like I'm not doing it for any money or anything. So I don't spend extra time researching the fish and species and tackle and everything. I just kind of go out do my thing and it's probably a good thing. So we have to pay works him pretty to be well. Here. All this info you're going to be giving us tonight is based off of soul facts that you have put to the test and figured out what works and what doesn't work. And some help from uh, Grandpa, because yeah. he, uh, he got me started pretty good. So so let's, let's start with the basics, Luke. Yep. Give us your, your boat, your favorite setup, how you like to do it. 
And we'll start. Latin lawns are where I troll. Yeah. No. Um, so on my boat, I run two separate programs. I have a planer board program, not inline planers, like big planer boards. And I run a program with eight rods off the side. Sometimes I'll have the downriggers going, but a lot of times. It just depends on how many people you got on the boat, too. Yeah. Yeah. Keep it legal with how many rods you can put out. But also, I mean, most times you can't even keep eight rods in the water at a time. And I have one or two guys setting lines out. So it doesn't even make sense to put downriggers out as well. So they just get in the way and tangle up. But. Anyway, so that's one program. And then I also run Dipsies. Um, I've never really experimented with inline planers. I know a lot of people use them, and they're What's very the difference. I, I don't. I guess I've always just known it as planer boards. Didn't know that there was like in or out. So an inline planer board actually is I don't know, maybe ten inch. I mean, you can get different sizes, but maybe ten inches across by five inches wide, and you clip it onto your line and set either left side or right side and it planes out so you don't have a planer mass no with that. Well, each but individual uh, pull each has individual one individual okay. pull has one is that and, a cheaper setup maybe than running like the um, big mass off the side well, of your boats I mean, and everything the, the mass are what's expensive because i mean my planer boards me and grandpa made so. yeah but i'm just curious if maybe like it's a cheaper way to get started running uh, planer boards I, I don't think so because i know a lot of charter captains that use uh inlines that you know, that's just what they what they use. They you know have planer boards or have dipsies or whatever, but they maybe just, easier to use. They really produce. They catch fish. I mean, it's uh, a lot of musky guys also use them. So. so my question is, if you have that big plate out there in the water, now I've brought in a perch, a nine so, inch perch sideways. Yeah, and it feels like a state record so walleye. So the planer board floats obviously, and they're real small plastic and foam, but. Uh, there's different designs to them. Some have flags on them, some don't. But when you reel it in, it stays floating on the surface. And then once you get it to your hand, you usually have to have somebody else unclip it off your off your line. And then you can finish reeling that fish in. So you're not dragging it sideways through the water yes. the whole time? Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. But... Uh, What have you guys noticed that Tom <laughs> Tom does not drink while he's not talking, and the only time he yeah Tom will t- sit will, quiet for ten minutes and won't take a sip of his beer as soon as he wants awkwardly. to talk. <laughs> Just it helps my creative juices get flowing. It does, but speaking of creative juices, we've had to get creative a couple times out on the boat because, like I said, I don't put a ton of effort into it. I just kind of go out and have fun and seem to do pretty well. Um, Hey now. We have Ruin Studio. Yeah, she's she's back. <laughs> Say hi, everybody. <laughs> so, uh, if she says hi back. Um, so, I've forgotten some things from time to time uh, going out on the boat, whether it's uh, forgot to put the planer boards in the boat, for example, or uh, forgot rubber bands for I've for been the guilty lines. of forgetting to put a plug in the boat. Uh, that was uh, my boat, actually. I didn't say it was my boat. I'm just saying. Well, I'm saying like, it was a to, boat. Just we were to just let, taking let on the people, water. Yeah, let the people know that uh, it was somebody in this room. But anyways, so we've had to get creative a few times. And I remember I didn't have uh, any rubber bands on the boat. So I couldn't attach my lines to the planer board. So I was like, okay, well. You don't I'm, keep like a giant bag i do i do but it after was, that day well, it, was, he started. it was the first time actually what happened was grandpa gave me this coffee can with rubber bands and clips in it so you know here you know it's yours had it on my boat whatever and just every time i went out it was right there i took the boat out i was like where is that coffee can and asked grandpa about it well he decided he wanted it back and never told me about it. So. Was it a nice Folgers, like the tin can? Uh, no, it was. It was actually it was a Folgers, but it was plastic. Oh. It was a nice medium like, or dark. Nice I could see him wanting the a tin can back, but the plastic one. No, you I think he was more worried about the, the bands and the clips. Yeah. Oh. So, anyways, <laughs> uh, I was wondering what I could do to get them out, so get my lines out. 
So I had a couple jet divers on the boat. So I was like, okay, well, I can run those jet divers on some long poles and get those out to the side. So I ran those uh, two, and then I had two slide divers. So I ran two slide divers off the side. So right now I'm running two separate programs, uh, jets and slides. And then uh, I had some dipsies. So I played the dipsies way out, and then I put a rod on each downrigger. So I had two downrigger rods, two jet divers, two slide divers, and two dipsy divers. So eight rods, four programs. Yeah. Nice. It was... And how did you do that day? Um, that was last year. Limited I... out first hour. I don't think it was first hour. I mean, we caught fish. I I don't think I've been out for walleye and got skunked. There you go. At least pulled something in every time. But okay. so, I also usually kind of wait until I'm sure that there's fish out there. I'm not the first guy exploring. You know, giving the reports back that hey, they're not here yet. I just kind of kind of go out when I know that they're here. But, okay. So you know they're there. You have, you know, all your setups in order. Yep. How do you pick where you're going to go to fish? I mean, I'm not asking you to say where you're going, but like, so I'm, I know. Is it temperature, if, depth? If I think people, that's what he's getting yeah, at. Wind yeah. direction. I mean, it's, I, I've been, this is, I think, this is my third season going out by myself, like on a boat. And so in prior to that, we went out with grandpa since I was, you know, six years old. So I've obviously when I'm six to, you know, 12, 13 years old, I wasn't looking at patterns or anything. It was, hey, you're just getting handed a rod when there's a fish taking on. me out on the boat and <laughs> yeah, I real fish in. Um, but over the past, you know, three years of going out myself, uh, I've noticed patterns and it's, it's just like anything else. You know, when you can tell when rut starts, you know, when you're hunting, you can, you know, pattern it, you know, okay, hey, I, correct me if I'm wrong, it's like October. End of October, early November is yeah. you'll or end of October you'll start like you know the See, young bucks will start acting like it's the rut, yeah. and you know and so forth. Yeah, so it's kind of the same thing. You know that all the fish are in Ohio, and once the water starts warming up, you know you can pay attention to water temperature. Okay, you know, but there it's different every year because there's been years where I've been catching fish in 24 feet of water early season and. This year, I started my first depth was you know over forty feet, so it's just kind of different every year, but it's still same principle. They go to Ohio, they come over here, go out once or twice, start marking fish, and get your line down there. The biggest thing is you got to get you got to have it. Bait doesn't matter as much. So early season when they're kind of finicky, sometimes it does play a big role. Um, a lot of people throw night crawler harnesses and troll real slow and kind of dump them on the bottom. They get the scent out there. They're real slow, just kind of wavy. So those will produce early season. But with the number of walleye that we have and them all competing for food, once that school comes over, you can pretty much throw a house key on your line. And if you're at the right depth, they're going to hit it. So you just got to figure should, out. That's what you should do this year is just see what bizarre things you can catch walleye on. And I bet I can catch him on some pretty weird stuff. But do you see Aaron? We we've brought up Aaron Weeb from Uncut oh, Angling yeah. a bunch of times. Fidget spinner? No, well that's a different one. But uh, his own hair? <laughs> that's another yeah, one. <laughs> another. He I got. Don't. It was like when he hit. I think it was one hundred or two hundred thousand subscribers on YouTube. They sent him a that. big play button. It was like a YouTube, yeah, YouTube silver. Play, yeah, yeah play it button. was huge. He drilled into it. Yeah, it drilled hook. holes in it and put hooks on it. And was catching pike with it. That's awesome. Yeah, it was hilarious. That, that dude's it's wild. It's a solid silver puck. But speaking of using your own hair, one of my old uh, welding teachers when I was in college, real big into fly fishing, um, and he, back in his drug use days, um, had like a... <laughs> Is that how he described it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, he was very crazy. open about the 70s were a different time. Um, <laughs> he used to have long, uh, like, po- he'd like shave most of his head except like the back and it was like a ponytail, and it was usually like pink or purple or something. We saw and kept it just for flies. Well, yeah, he ended up um, when he finally decided just to shave everything off. He cut his ponytail off, and he's got it like in a Ziploc bag in his garage, and he uses it to tie <laughs> flies. That's pretty sweet. The same guy also records his own farts and just starts playing them when he wants you to get out of his office. That's so, wild. Yeah, he's that's a weird, different, strange character. different character. <laughs> 
It's, it's, good fly fishermen, though. Yeah. Well, fly fishermen are their own breed. They're, I've met yeah, some they're really weird dudes that are heavy fly fishermen. Mark. Won't use the last name. <laughs> Doesn't need one. But So anyways, like I was saying, the most important thing for me is you got to obviously find where the fish are and put something in front of their face. So that's all I do when I'm out there. Like I said, when I forgot rubber bands, I was like, okay, what do I have on the boat right now that I can get a lure down to, you know, 30 feet or whatever it was. And, you know, you have, you can sometimes strap lead sinkers to them or whatever to get them down a little deeper. Cause well, your deepest diving lures are going to go, you know, maybe 25 feet. You can get some big mans, you know, that go 35 or there's, there's some crazy lures out there, but for the most part, your your reef runners, your flicker minnows, your uh, Bay Rat XDs, uh, Berkeley XLDs or Bagley XLDs, they're all, you know, that 18 to 25 foot range. So when the fish are out deeper than that, you got to figure out how to get your line lower, whether it's strapping weights to it, using lead core line, uh, putting them on down riggers, using jet divers, whatever you got to do. So that's what, my biggest thing. Do you know what dictates the depth of where the walleye are is it water temperature temperature, temperature yep. do you know what ideal temperature that the walleye prefer to be in to be 100 percent honest with you that goes back to like me saying i'm not don't do my research on it i couldn't tell you just what, look at the fish finder and say 40 feet today <laughs> yeah you see an arc and sometimes you know they're hugging way on the bottom and whatnot but usually they're suspended a little bit do you, how aggressive, like how precise do you have to be? So say you're on your fish finder and you see walleye suspended at 35 feet and the deepest you can get is 25 feet. Well, they'll come up, will they, will they'll they, come up 10. It, it, I mean, it obviously it depends, so depends have, on how hungry they are and how much yeah. they've been fighting for food, there's I would imagine. Yeah, there's sometimes you can, you know, drag a lure in front of their face you know, and smack them in the side of the head, and they won't need anything. But I just didn't know if, like, the walleye were suspended at 25 feet, if you had to be, you know, like, 22 I, I, to 27 feet, I, or I they like weren't to go. Gonna... I like to go, you know, two feet above them, like put them either right in them I mean, or two feet above. You've been fishing, though, before we're, you know, we're done fishing, and you pull them in, you can't even get your line in without a fish hitting it. Be- yeah. I mean, and you're dragging almost right across the top. Yeah. I've, and those walleyes will come right up to this and almost hit top water. I've caught fish letting line out. So, you know, your lure's not even digging. It's, you know, just floating back there. Look at and, that wounded bait fish look. Yeah, yeah, right in the prop wash. And uh, you end up catching fish like that. So, I mean, there's, I'm sure there's science, and there's people we could have on here that could you know, talk your ear off and give you some actual good, you know, physical, uh, knowledge and facts. Um, but I'm, I'm not really that big guy money to have those guys on you, Luke. You do. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm just, you know, if you want to go out and catch some fish, really all you need to do is find and it, and it does help the more lures you can get out, the better. I mean, it's tough if you go trolling with one or two rods, you know, but know exactly how deep your line is or how deep your lure is and exactly how fast you're going. And What's a good ballpark speed you know, for a first-time walleye fisherman just getting I, his feet wet? I mean, it's, 25 to 30. Yeah, uh, I, like, I like about 17. Have you ever seen those people who high-speed troll for Wahoo? Yeah. They go like no. 12. Insane. Yeah, like jumping, ground. like jumping waves while they're trolling. It's insane. That must be an aggressive fish. Oh, Wahoo? It's like... I don't even know what a walk is. You know what a is. barracuda is? Yep. So, like... Saw one in an aquarium take, last week. Yeah, you did. Um, so, take a barracuda and, like... Give it cocaine. Yeah, give it cocaine <laughs> and steroids. Neat. And change it a little bit. But that's basically what we were They are not fi- the same fish. Right. I remember when we were... <laughs> They're sh- almost nothing uh, alike. <laughs> when we were shark fishing, they had those barracuda. They were trying to get Luke on a spin cast. I Real, looked into like, it yeah. and bought it for about 45 minutes. That was, Couldn't get it was sweet. Do you need a steel leader for one yeah. of those guys. They yeah. got teeth. Yeah, just little ones. Yeah, similar to like a, a smallmouth bass. Yeah, that, like that's what I would say. Sandpaper. More like an alligator, but either way. Speaking of that, did you hear about that guy that got his arm in a 12-foot alligator down in Florida? No. Yeah, he... Just it, his arm? Yeah, just his arm. Like he, he had was, a good day then. <laughs> yeah. The... the detached from his body no so what happened was he was on an alligator hunt and 
you know, they're in a boat. And I don't know if you guys have ever seen Swamp People. Good show. Do the big turn of a bitch a little bit. That, 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 that show. show? Yeah. So basically, from the article I read, it sounded like they were doing it just like they do it on the show where they, you know, put the line in the water and then come, come back, back in a couple hours yeah. or the next it, day. Pop it with a twenty two or something. <laughs> no, what they were using was a bang stick. I don't know exactly. Oh, it's, I think that's what they use to yeah. kill cattle, isn't it? Kind it's of pretty put, much you put it on you their put, forehead and press a button and it shoots a steel rod through them. I'm not sure if that's what I'm they assuming, were using. I'm but, sure that's well. What, that's what it said in the article was okay. a bang stick. I think that's how they kill cows. Um, Maybe, you know, I I sometimes call like what, what's a boomstick? Somebody calls something a boomstick. I have no idea. I'm not sure what it is. I mean, a gunner. Something. I thought that was a what was like what the that's a boom operator that holds oh. the microphone. <laughs> anyway, we're getting off track. I was gonna say I could go way off track with the boom operators. Off, off track? Yeah. So, out on the alligator fishing trip and hooks into a. Would that be a hunting or fishing trip? Both. Twelve foot, twelve footer. And he's, you know, got it right up to the side of the boat and he's telling his buddy, you know, all right, hit him with the bang stick. And so his buddy's trying to get it lined up on his head. And he said, the next thing he knows, the alligator death rolled, got halfway into the boat and latched onto his arm. And he said, for whatever reason, the alligator let go. And they never did end up getting this alligator. It's still... Still out there. Still out there. But the search continues. Yeah. So it got his arm, and he said it thrashed around a little bit, and he said he felt some crunching and popping and broke his arm in quite a few places, obviously had to go to the hospital. Um, apparently their mouth is pretty dirty um, living in the swamp. Mm-hmm. And I guess the doctor told them that, you know. You got with, all them teeth and no toothbrush. Exactly. <laughs> but with all the bacteria that's in their mouth, odds are you're going to lose your arm. And so he said he went into surgery thinking he was going to wake up with, you know, one less arm. But they were able to save his arm. It's been a couple weeks, not actually a couple months now. He said he's back to work, full mobility. That's wild. Yeah. Wow. Pretty interesting read. Wow. I'm surprised is... he didn't even get his eye. You know? <laughs> but they said they sent a big search crew out for this yeah. alligator. Um, nobody could find it. They're thinking maybe because um, they did get a harpoon in it or something. Um, it t- maybe died and sunk to the bottom of the swamp. No, it was more like a gaff hook on a rope. So, you know, they get it with the gaff and then pulled in with the rope. But they're thinking maybe it cause it took the gaff with them. So they're thinking it could have got tied up and drowned. Hmm. He said he's not alligator hunting anymore, though. So. <laughs> One and done. I don't I know saying. how we got onto that. You. You. You got us onto that. Yeah, I think you, we were you talking about barracuda, and you said something like an alligator mouth. I, that, I, and then you said alligator exactly teeth. Happened. And then you said, speaking of alligators. Speaking of teeth. The original did you see question. the shark caught out of Lake Erie the other day? Oh, my God. Yeah, I saw that on Facebook. That was hilarious. I thought it was pretty funny. <laughs> it was obviously a joke. Yeah. There's no sharks in Lake Erie. Uh, okay. We'll talk about that another. We'll have a whole podcast on that. <laughs> sharks in Lake Erie yeah. next week. Shark week. Tune in. The original question that got us here was how fast do you troll for walleye? That is that is the question. Um, generally speaking, you talk to somebody and you say, if you give me one number, like one answer, you know, whatever, it's going to be like 2-2 two, two, is what they're going to tell you. 2-3. Two, but so That's 2.2. Two. Yes, okay. 2.2 two miles an hour. But I have trolled anywhere from 1-8 all the way up to 3 mile an hour, maybe even 3-2. Like I went, I've gone out one time this year, and I, uh, I think I got twelve, so two man limit. Um, we had to throw, uh, I think four back. But anyways, I was trolling two seven, and any time I would take you know a turn or whatever, I would catch fish on my fast side. So I know my lures were going over two seven, and I bumped down to you know two two a couple times, two three. Wouldn't catch anything. As soon as I got up to like that two seven three mile an hour, I was catching fish. So, do you have any idea what dictates? Like, is it the How bigger cool. the waves, the faster you troll, or vice versa? No. Um. So waves definitely help when it's glass flat. So say you're fishing thirty feet of water, and those fish are you know only you know fifteen twenty feet down. Look! Look at your ceiling in your house. Most ceilings, you know, are what ten feet. I don't know, Uncle Frank. You would I think know they're that. like eight or nine. Nine uh, feet. Standard uh, ceiling heights in a house is eight foot one and eight inches, uh, or nine foot one and an eight. 
Okay, so let, let's say, you know, nine feet. So then if you got any tall peaks in your house or whatever. So anything, you know, five feet above that. So not very far if you think about it. And you're driving a 20-plus foot boat with a motor running across them. And they can see that, you know, real easy. If the lake's glass flat and you're cruising through with a 20-foot boat, it's pretty pretty easy for them fish to feel the vibration, to see you, whatever. So I do like some waves. Walleye chop. Walleye chop, as they call it. But Two-footers. What dictates speed for me is uh, a lot of times current will have a big role on it. So if you're trolling with the current, your lures, it's going to kind of, you're going to have to think about it a little bit, but technically aren't moving at 2.2 miles an hour. Say I'm trolling at 2.2 and I'm going with the current. My lures are almost, you know, sitting still, if you will, because they're running with the water have you ever been riding a bike it's like throwing a baseball on a train technically you like if you're if a train's going 90 miles an hour yeah and you throw a baseball 25 miles an hour technically the baseball <laughs> is going 112 yes. miles or 115 miles an hour yes but it that's does, the but same concept as up, yeah it doesn't seem like it yeah you ever been like you know running around the track or something at you know school and you got wind coming in your face and you're like, oh my god, it's so hard to run. And then as soon as you make that turn around the corner, you're like, where did that wind go? Well, you're just running at the same speed as the wind, so you don't feel it anymore. Kind of the same thing. Like when you put your hand out the car window, you can really feel it because yeah, you're going you're against driving it into a wind. Yep. It, yeah, it's still gonna suck even at, like because you're going <laughs> seventy miles an hour. Why do you have to be going seventy in a car? You've never gone five mile an hour in a car. No, nope, ten never. miles an hour. But no, we're getting off topic again. But anyways, so if you're going like you're trolling against the current. Um, you sometimes you can slow it down to you know that one eight two mile an hour and so i i I guess i'm ignorant to this i didn't realize that there's a current like out in the lake oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah did not realize that yep but uh so yeah you know because when we go out to the beach or like the ocean and you're like no and you go out there and you like you go straight out from your beach towel and you're out there playing around monkey farting and whatnot and you're like, all right, I'm just going to walk straight back to my towel. And then you turn around and the towel's... You're 300 yards. 300 okay, yards. that's... All right. That's also the ocean, but Lake Erie has sort of the same thing. Makes sense. Uh, wind, you know, direction too. So if there's like... Yeah, there's so much. There's pressure, uh, you know, wind patterns, temperature. There's... Um, I forget what they call them, but there's like places in the lake that'll kind of move around that have like a constant temperature in them and there's a whole bunch of science and like i said if you're doing it for you know tournaments or money there's you know a lot of research you can do and whatnot to find all that out and i don't have all of those exact answers kind of kind of a simplified uh approach to but see i don't think fishing. grandpa knows all those no, he but he what he has off. on most people is Experience. that he's been fishing that lake since he was 20 years old, probably younger, actually, and he is now, you know, 75. So he's got you know, probably 60-plus years of experience, honestly, because he probably started before he was 20, but on that lake. So it's kind of like uh, Brett Favre from the NFL. Didn't really, didn't really have a ton of talent, but he was just in there for – Ever. He was pretty talented. Not his last couple years. Once he started retiring every year, he kind Put of a guy that's 106 on a boat, and he's probably not going to have any much more talent anymore. <laughs> oh, yeah, he will. He's got the knowledge, though. He's got it all upstairs. But. Yeah, Frank, while you're in there. <laughs> he just offered you a beer like three seconds ago. I thought I had a half. Turns out I had a quarter. <clears throat> oh. So, favorite bait hit me. Oh, geez. I Like honestly, in an ideal situation, you know the school's out there. My favorite thing, like when I just, when I think about it, like when I'm dreaming about walleye fishing, what, what lure am I throwing on my line? Yeah. Honestly, probably a reef runner, to be 100% honest with you. They're crazy bait. They swim side to side. They can get out of tune easy. They're kind of a pain, but... I'll tell you what, if you have some tuned-in lures that are running straight, 
they what do you will... mean by tuned? So you wow. bend the the eye. It's like G sharp. Yeah, yeah. Um, have you ever went to let a lure off the back of the boat and it kicks real hard to one side? Mm-hmm. Then you got to kind of tweak the eyelid a little bit, no, like on the bill. So there's a little tool you can do with pliers or whatever, but there's a little metal ring on the bill uh, or the lip of your lure. And if it's running real hard one way, you can kind of bend that lip to compensate for it so your lure is swimming straight back. And reef runners are notorious for getting out of tune and tangling up with each other if you try running them too close. So when you're running reef runners, you really got to spread them out and you got to make sure they're tuned. And if the, both those things happen, they catch fish. Um, I know a lot of guys have been using bay rats lately. Um, they're a local company. Yeah. Um, I personally um don't have a ton of bay rats um they have a bay rat uh, i don't know if it's a xl or xd or xld or they all got their different brands for their deep divers but i personally don't have any of their deep divers but i have some of their shallow divers that are similar to a ranoski you know maybe only go three to five feet and i've used those on downriggers and caught fish on those so you have a favorite color candy corn blueberry muffin uh, I'm a big trick or treat guy. Uh, it's like a white, white body with a like pinkish head, and it's got a black silhouette of their bone structure on it. It's a pretty, pretty good lure. But honestly, I don't. I mean, it does matter certain times a year. Um, and even like with like um, the sun, doesn't that have a little yeah, bit? Yeah, of day to day, it matters. That's what I mean. I mean I, just like but, even. Just it's, with too much sunlight. It's one of those things that the past, like I said, I, this is my third season out. The past two years have been such like good hatches. Ridiculous it doesn't matter. Ridiculous yeah. for walleye fishing. Anybody. That's one thing. That's why it got so big. Everybody Any, walleye fishes yeah, now because it got easy. Anybody, yeah, with a boat thinks they're professional now because they can go out and you know catch a ton of fish. Which they didn't not, fish back in the eighties. Yeah, which not knocking on them, but I mean, he's knocking. Yeah, I'm knocking. Um, it's just it. It is easier. Um, so I really haven't had to fight with my colors that I was using. I could kind of just. Eh, That's what I noticed. If I, like we, if I was a fish, I'd eat that one. And throw like it I know, there. like I, I've been out with Grandpa this year, uh, and we'll run you know different lures off each side of the boat, run different colors, just trying to see what works. Mm-hmm. And you catch fish on all of them. It doesn't yep. like there. There it have matter. been times where I think that's the, Grandpa's so used to having to do that. Like yeah. You put one lure on one side and one lure on the other side and see what's working. But I like Luke said, this doesn't past matter few anymore. years. Yeah. Um, so I, I have had to do that, though. Where I'll, And I got that from Grandpa. I'll start different lures on each side that run, you know, a little bit different, maybe a little different size or depths and run them, you know, and I'll match colors on uh, opposite sides of the boat or, you know, make them all completely different and see a lure that starts firing and you know maybe change change colors on another rod that hasn't been hit yet and see if it continues to fire then you know i'll switch my program over to that side of the boat or uh that specific lure or color and it does it does play a big role i mean but in the past couple years like i said it i don't think it really matters what you're throwing out there because like i said i've gone out one time this year and i know charters that were going out and you know catching seven fish 10 fish 12 fish and i went out one time and caught a two-man limit so i mean i did have to throw some back but a lot of a lot of short fish this year a lot of 14 inch fish yeah grandpa and i were throwing a few back when we so went it seems like that's been the case the last couple we of had years, one so. that was up to 30 though like i mean it, most of them though were in that 14 and a half yeah we caught one that was uh, we caught a couple that were in like that five six pound range but then we caught one right around seven but we didn't catch any slobs in the time that i went out most of our fish actually surprisingly we caught those like four shorts and then i think our smallest fish after that was like 19 like we didn't have any 16 17 18 but yeah i mean that's kind of the nature of the beast when you get these hatches like this Mm -hmm. um it's like fish in our pond in our backyard we got a million bass in there but you got to weed through 40 of them to get, you know, that tank. Same same story. The bucket, if you will. The bucket. No, that's that's largemouth bass. Yeah. yeah, the big old bucket mouth. But Any do's or don'ts you want to leave our listeners? 
Um, well, I would, you know, before we even, you know, get into that, because I'm not really sure how long have we been going on this? Yeah, Half hour. Only, yeah, we're only, you know, not even 40 minutes into this one, so I don't want to quite, you know, start throwing out the do's and don'ts and sign off yet. I think, uh, I think we could talk about eating these fish for for That's a minute. A good idea. That's a uh, good idea because walleye sure are tasty. Could bring they, back the smoke break. I think you got a lighter. Oh my goodness! <laughs> well, may may I see it? Oh, you. Oh, I pass it down. Thank you. you. Gotta flick it into the mic. I, I will. I will. We're not. We're not there. Like for when the time break. comes. Actually, you know what? Why don't, why don't Why don't we do it? We'll just We'll just start it off. But can you do a smoke break? If I've never actually smoked a walleye. How about you it's only just it's, it's just a name. Just go with what you feel. If one time uh, we did a podcast with uh, I think the Outdoor Drive guys, and they thought we were like a literal like we're gonna take a break. And yeah, come back. <laughs> that was when I was in Alaska because yeah. I remember I was listening to it, and then you were telling me about it when I got home, and they were like, "Oh, I thought we were gonna like go out and have a sit." I'm like, "What is he talking about?" <laughs> but anyways, let's hear it. Wow, I haven't heard that in a while. You gotta, yeah. Oh, I actually got a got to light, light it. Too. it. No man, Luke, what are you doing? <laughs> Have a smoke break. No smoke break. Oh, but, it's a good time for a smoke break. So, all right, and we'll be right back. Yeah, all we're right, back. we're back. So, uh, like I said, I technically have never smoked walleye. I know people like to smoke, you know, salmon and trout. It's kind Steel of more like really the, good. That's because yeah. it tastes like shit, and that's yeah. the only way you can eat it. <laughs> that, is, that is actually factual. But I did catch fresh salmon in Alaska that we just threw on a pan totally in our Airbnb, different. and that was fantastic. But did was you it chum? have any pink chum salmon? salmon? Uh, no pink. Actually, we did. We kept a pink and filleted it up, but we didn't need it. Uh, my buddy Carter gave it to his buddy who wanted some fresh Alaskan salmon. So. Oh, that <laughs> asshole. Yeah, so we gave him a pink. If you drink about 12 bush lights They're and then delicious. cook some pink salmon on the grill. Oh, oh boy. Yeah. Uh, so when you go through, town. blackened is kind of what you so, used to help Terry Simmons I'm and Grandpa. Get, and then... I'm getting there. I'm getting there. So if you've ever filleted a trout uh or you know a salmon their meat's kind of like orangey you know red color well, like a it, salmon color if yeah you will. like a salmon or it's like mud brown like when those guys catch a boot steelhead that's been in 70 degree water and spawned out for two months and they decide to take it home and that's disgusting but besides the point uh walleye are a nice white flaky meat kind of like perch uh, so, I don't know. I'm sure somebody's throwing them in a smoker. But the way I like to cook them, as Nick mentioned, is blackening them. So, my dad makes his own blackening seasoning. It's a mixture of... Uh, Cajun base. Cajun, yeah. And uh, some other... Secret spices. Some other secret spices. Uh, in herb. And you get a pan real hot, and you throw some butter on there. Gotta be cast iron. Ca- oh, my goodness. That's... Griswold, that, that's preferably. Key, yeah, Griswold cast iron. You cannot blacken walleye if you don't have a cast iron Griswold. It's actually a lie. If you guys you, want you to, do need cast iron. If you guys want to try it, and you don't actually need cast iron. You can blacken fish on an aluminum pan. But if somebody at home is pan. like, oh my god, I don't aluminum pans are not <laughs> I wouldn't use an aluminum pan. They have aluminum pans. I don't think they do. They definitely do. Why don't you do Almost a hundred percent. What are those pans you bought my mom? Cigarettes going out, just go for it. Hold on. What are those pans you bought mom? I don't know. But... Aluminum I don't so, think so. They are. Um, so anyways, <laughs> you put your pan real hot, throw some butter in there, and you take your blackening seasoning, and if you don't have any, you can just use Cajun. Works fine. Uh, make sure your Cajun's not, like, super salty. Get a low-sodium Cajun. Yeah, low-sodium. Coat one side, evenly dust it, and put that side of your filet down on the pan. And I usually, if you catch them real big walleye, I'll actually cut the fillet in half. Yeah, like butterfly it so they're not as thick, so they cook more even. And I will put it uh, Cajun side down and then take that Cajun and sprinkle it on uh, the top side. So then when I go and flip the fillet, there's also Cajun on that side. And like I said, you cook it pretty hot. Obviously, it's fish. Make sure it's cooked all the way through. And... uh, it does, squirt. yeah. It does burn, like char the outside a little bit, but that's the blackening part of it. That's all part of it. Yeah, if you're like, oh my god, my fish turned black. It's that's why it's called blackening, and it's phenomenal. My personal favorite way to eat it. The most common way is probably just deep frying them, 
people bread them and deep fry them, and you almost you can't beat it. It's uh, that's a good way to eat it. You get some peanut oil and beer batter, beer batter, and oh my goodness, some sometimes I'll even get crazy, throw a little ketchup on there, put a little salt. It's phenomenal. One time, the thing yeah. is, well, yeah. The uh, thing just is, we're cooking with one, if if you if you would, you, you would you what <laughs> have you ever had a dream that you um <laughs> no I was just when you're talking about getting creative with your frying fish one time Sharpie and I tried using pancake batter as um, like a breading as like as a breading yeah how, um, how'd it go it was terrible okay uh, absolutely we were pretty tuned up and hungry that's all we had Good. dog water if you will I, I would prefer to drink dog water than eat that again. Okay. I mean, just think about, like, the sweetness of a pancake mm-hmm. while eating fish. <laughs> so, basically, it was horrible. Basically, you ruined it. Was, it. it yeah. was disgusting. You wasted, it was also, you wasted like, very eight old, year old freezer very, burnt. Very old freezer burnt fish. Would not recommend. Okay. I got what sick. I was going to say is, you know, I've been spoiled with my granddad's fish fries. I bet it's some fish fries that were dog water, if you will. Um, I think the best way to go about it is we've always had the oil like 350, no more than 375, um, but right around 350. Uh, put it in there until it starts to float. Give it, you know, not even another minute and you're golden. Mm-hmm. I've, I've been to fish fries where they cook the shit out of it and let it float for too long. And it just or, soaks up or they have it. Yeah. Or they have it. Uh, they're oiled too cold. And yeah, it just soaks in the grease, and then your meat's all mushy, and it just doesn't have mm-hmm. that crispy. Like when you bite into a piece of fish, you want it to snap on the outside, kind of be flaky, and then a nice like burn your mouth where you like do a hot, 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 hot. Yeah. like yeah, for, like the first first couple chews of it, and really cool it down. Like there's no other way to eat a deep fried fish. I mean, everybody in this room, the first you have to. it's it's all so yeah, it comes it out of the grease, of... and like oh here we go. Yeah, that's the best. Like the, it just. Those plates off the fryer almost never even make it back to like the no, food line. It's funny that you know, like you're literally grabbing a. I talked about this the other day. I don't think it was on the podcast, but you grab a 350 degree piece of fish and it's burning your fingers and like your the brain, first, your yeah. brain, the way that God made us. Your instinct is to put it in your mouth. Like, oh, it's too hot. I can't hold it. Let me put it in my mouth. And I just burn the shit You were talking about that with uh, Ken on Gatlinburg. That's exactly what it was, yeah. <laughs> you, you go to, like, drop something in your instincts to stick your foot out so it doesn't hit the ground. I've done that you with know, a knife. And then, yeah, like, was, oh, pull it back. I was going to say, no matter, whether it's a, you know, quarter-pound cell phone, a knife, or a engine that falls off of a cherry picker. like it's, you got to catch it. Yeah, your instinct is, oh, my God, don't let it hit the floor. But... So, yeah, those are, you know, the two classic ways. I'm sure, you know, people bake them in the oven. Uh, my buddy Levi, he does a super simple, uh, I think it's flour, breadcrumbs, and seasoned salt. Probably and just it, in a pan. Yeah, cooks it stovetop, and he, you know, it's phenomenal. He'll actually cook it, put it in the fridge, and bring it into work, and that's the only, only, only fish that I will eat cold is when Levi brings in, you know, walleye that he cooked the night before, and I don't put any... You know, any other thing on, no ketchup or whatever, and it's really good. He, what about walleye We got to get cheeks. Levi on here. We do Let's need to say get Levi, Levi like, has a mental GPS of the shoreline of Lake Erie. It's yeah, insane. It's, I was fishing with him on the boat, Luke's boat, and, you know, we're in, like— And mind you, Levi doesn't really ever go on boats. That's what he, I mean. I, like, the shoreline he has yes. mapped well, mentally. I was perfect. fishing with Luke Just for on the his listeners, boat. for Tom's story. Uh, I was fishing with Luke— and Levi on Luke's boat, and we were off this rock wall. I'm not going to give any places away. And we're moving real slow, um, you know, perpendicular with the rock wall. And Levi goes right up here. I think your word would be parallel. Yeah, I'm sorry, parallel with the rock wall. And Levi goes, I think right up here, uh, it should, you know, there's a channel. It's going to drop down to about 24 feet. And we drive another 20 yards, and there's that big dip, 24 feet on the bottom lake. Just from him standing and casting on the rocks and, like, different lures, he just can feel bottom and just knows. knows how deep yeah, it he, is. He doesn't, have, he doesn't have one of those bobbers that he casts at or anything. He doesn't have a boat or a canoe that he can go out with a fish finder, or even drop a line down. Like, he just he knows. And he'll, he'll go out ice fishing, not to fish, but to map. Depth check. Map the lake, the structure, everything for open water season. Like That's he is insane. 
it, and he doesn't I've write anything down. Him, I was just going to say, I've never seen him write it down or anything. No, he doesn't write a thing down, doesn't put it in his phone. It's just all upstairs. And that's one of those things that it'd be real cool, you know, for, you know, a kid or a grandkid or something to have that. But it's also kind of cool that he's just got it upstairs. And that's one of those things that he's going to take with him, you know. Yeah. Well, our great grandpa used to keep track of everything. And mm-hmm. I don't know who ended up with that book. I don't think anybody um, did. I don't think it was ever found. Mm-mm. Yeah, but I know he used to keep track of everything. He had like every little detail yep. of that lake mm-hmm. mapped moon, out in the book. Moon phase and yeah, uh, everything. It was more. I think he was more Presque Isle, not yeah. like yeah. The, the lake. Below. Yeah, he oh, yeah. was all about the bay. Yeah, the bay and the ponds on Presque Isle, stuff like that. When when were the like sturgeon a big thing in Lake Erie? Was that like 2012? the twenties? Twelve. No. <laughs> like it was, the twenties? I have no yeah, idea. I honestly have no time. idea. It was, it was like a hundred years ago and longer it was a very okay. long time because I, 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 I just didn't know if great grandpa was around during that time or he not. was around but i don't he, he would have been kid. young because i know yeah. great grandma was born in like 1911 yeah. 1913 something like that mm-hmm. so great grandpa was probably around during that time yeah. but I, probably, I really yeah because like i said i honestly don't know when that was i just know it was way before my time yeah but uh, back to walleye cheeks oh yeah cheeks some people swear by them, and you know it's, it's, it's the flame mignon of the walleye. You, oh, you gotta cut the cheeks out. It's so good. Oh my god, it, it's just it's like any other piece. I mean, it's a little bit chewier. It's kind of like well, like, like a scallop. Can, can, no consistency, like a frog leg, like a little bit like a chewier. Just like a scallop. No, frog legs are not like a scallop. No, it's not that far from a scallop, Tom. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not saying you, it's exact. To be yeah. honest with you, I've never eaten a scallop. I've just looked at them, and they just don't. They don't look like they would have the same consistency when I put it in my mouth. But they're pretty close. So, anyways, it's like a little little chewier. Um, but you get a you know a 16 inch to a 24 inch walleye, and you're getting like you know not even a half dollar size yeah. fillet. Now I get they're like, oh, you know, it doesn't really matter with the small ones, but you have to do it with the big ones. You got to do it. So. You know, I was like, you know, okay, I've heard this so many times. So, you know, I got a cup. We went out deep and we were catching some porkers, you know, anywhere from 28 to, you know, 31. Just big, big mm-hmm. fish. And I was like, all right, I'll cut the cheeks out of them. So I wasted my time cutting the cheeks out of them and cooked them up in the pan like that night, you know. And it was just like, wow, this it's tastes pretty, like walleye, yeah. you know. So I get like, you know, not wasting meat on a fish, you know, if you want to really get every ounce of meat off of them and uh it's probably the same know. concept as us talking about how you have to eat the heart mm-hmm. out of a deer. Yeah. i mean there are a so, lot of guys just leave it but yeah to the people that enjoy it you you're crazy not to yeah. eat it so yeah. it's just one of those things that you know if you grew up eating cheek meat you know that's the best thing in the world so for me it I never really did it so i could take it or leave it if somebody handed me a bag of cheek meat and you know, hey thanks you know i'd eat it and it tastes good like i'm not knocking it saying it doesn't taste good but it's not gonna it's waste not, your time it's not on a different level than a regular walleye fillet it's gotcha. you know neck and neck just different texture i thought it was cheek cheek and cheek just different <laughs> texture but yeah i just wanted to throw that in there before we you know do your do's wa- and don'ts. yeah wound down on here just to if anybody, you know, does go walleye fishing, like, you know, yeah, you know, I just always, you know, cooked it on the pan. Well, you know, obviously there's three different ways him. to do it. Yeah. So, so anyways, back do's to and don'ts. Questions. Uh, as far as, I mean, we've focused open water fishing this pretty much this whole time. We have the only time. That's we the only experience we really have. I mean, Levi has a ton shore fishing and that's kind of, um, mine and Levi's relationship is, uh, Anyways, mine and Levi's relationship is he showed me a lot of good places and techniques and strategies to catch fish from the shores where he can't access them out deep on a boat like I can, but he has it down to where those fish come in shallow, what they want to eat, when they want to eat it. And Levi is like, oh man, I wish I could just get out there. So then I take him out on my boat, and it's kind of like a give and take, you know, where he teaches me the ways of the shoreline, and I give him access to the deeper water to fish. So um, a don't for that, and it's one of Levi's things that he taught me, and it's held true, is you don't shine your light on the water. 
I you say don't wear a white t-shirt on the boat. That that's no, that's ever. And don't wear bananas on the boat. If you're if you're fishing with Levi, you will not see him in a white shirt ever. All birds of prey like birds that prey on fish have, have white, white bellies. bellies. And Levi will not wear a white shirt while he's fishing. And I know I wear white a lot while Just I fish. Just to keep cool in the sun. And, yeah, and I've caught fish. And yeah, even, but I mean, even predators catch a lot of fish, though. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, but it's just like it's one of those things. Oh. Tom wears that little. Don't put bananas spike. on your boat. Yeah, Tom wears that little spiked necklace that Dad got us when we, were, when we were five. You know, hunting. If he doesn't wear it, he's not going to shoot a buck. You know what? What movie was it? Frank's that... got the same T-shirt he wears during hunting season. Yeah, same thing. I wear it every single day. And a waffle. Uh, insulated long shirt that is half missing <laughs> yes it is it's my so, favorite shirt though so it, and it's it's those little superstitions and things that make it fun that mm-hmm. you know you why are you out there if you're not you know having fun but anyways don't shine the light on the water uh when would you I, have is that night fishing yeah night okay, fishing, fishing. Like shore a, fishing yeah, the middle of the day yeah shore fit because a lot of times when you're shore fishing those fish during the day they're going to go out and they're going to come into the shoreline to feed at night so you got to be there when it's dark, and when you're shining a light in the water, you know, hey, are there any fish out there? You know, and you kind of spook them, and it sets them off. Whether it actually does and makes a huge difference, I don't know. But I have fished and you know had my headlamp on and shined it in the water, and oh crap, and not caught any fish. And I've not shined my light on the water and caught a lot of fish. So to me, it's holding true. That's not like one of those superstitions. That's kind of a, a that don't. That one makes for sense. Me. Yeah, that's yeah. a don't for me. Um, open water out on the boat. Uh, my buddy uh, Bailey would tell you don't get hammered the night before. I think Nick would tell you that too. And wake up at 3.30 in the morning on for five uh, three, three to four footers out on the lake. That's a, that's a big I've, don't. I've done five footers on a night after a bike rally. How'd that go for you? Do you chum them in? I was chumming, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Still had a good time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. So that, that's a big don't uh, right there. As far as fishing, like I said, there's not really many don'ts. Uh, don't forget to put your uh, drain plug in the boat, Nick. Um, but just like I said earlier, the biggest concept is find out where those fish are, get a lure, in their strike zone, however you got to do it, whether it's, you know, if you don't have the fancy downriggers and whatnot, you can strap a hunk of lead to a spoon, you know, and just know your speed. If you know how fast you're trolling and how deep your lures are, you're going to catch fish. So that's my my biggest thing there. Um, hopefully uh, I can get maybe Nick Tom or Whitey on the camera here soon and record a uh, – a walleye trip, and we can kind of do a actual video. I thought of, you were talking Sunday, possibly. I could be about it Sunday. I think it's right. supposed to I'll, thunderstorm. I'll run the camera the whole time. Okay, I think it's supposed to thunderstorm on Saturday, and I haven't like, looked at the wind reports for Sunday. Fishing's but. not like my forte. I enjoy it. What um, about the wood splitting party? The wood splitting party's not going to start at five thirty in the morning. I can promise you that. <laughs> That's this is true. This is true. Luke said we'd be home before ten a.m. Well, but the way I catch them, buddy, will be home. Yeah, I'll run. I'll run camera the whole time. Perfect. But it sounds like something I could get behind. Your boat's full. Sorry. Yep. (laughs) Two man. Yep, it's two man boat. Actually, I don't like running it with two man. Well, it was gonna. I thought Kayla and I have been trying to get on the boat, and then you're talking Uncle Chris and Mom possibly. Yeah, we can squeeze Tommy on there too. If you're just gonna be sitting behind a camera. We'll figure, oh, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Does your, uh, I'll figure it out. Does your, does your um, what's that weird gyroscope thing? Um, would what? my camera fit on that? Your gyroscope. The thing that like you know, the thing well, you you put your camera in so it stays oh, a, a gimbal. A gimbal starts yes. with a G. <laughs> yeah. Does your will your gimbal fit my camera? Uh, probably. I mean, do you have a little screw adapter on the bottom? Oh yeah. Yeah. Then that'd be perfect the for the boat. Gimbal I bought. You can literally strap like a. 10 pound camera at the top of this thing it's, okay it's big nice. all right well that'd be perfect for the boat versus a tripod well you can just use my camera i'm gonna use my we'll figure it out when I you get have out a shotgun there. mic so do i oh you bought one yeah yeah well mine my videos are nice and crisp they both shoot 4k <laughs> yeah but there's a difference 
I had a drone that shot. 4K. It's like you have a Honda 250 today and a Honda 250 back in 1980. No, it, no it's like a Mustang that has 180 horse in 1960 and a Mustang that has 180 horse in 2000. That horsepower is just different. It, it just, just hits it different. It just hits dude. different. <laughs> Whatever you say. Go make things out of clay. Or live by, by the bay. bay. Eat some hay. Just may. What do you say? Speaking of what do you say, what do you say, guys? Yeah, why don't you wrap it up, Luke? Oh, my goodness. Oh, I, I'm getting really nervous right now. All um, eyes are on him. But uh, I'm going to say it. Go ahead and get outside, guys. Thanks for listening.